What up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Liberia to the world. Most of you guys are fully aware of the event, have heard about it, heard about it, or even follow on social media or even news sites about the details on this event. Uh, this channel is Liberia to the world. So basically anything mainly concerning Liberia, especially something that's on a on the higher, on the broader scale as this one, um, it's only right that I at least talk about it, right? Um, and at least shine some light on it. First of all, before even moving forward, I want to extend my sympathy to the grieving families. Um, a lot of lives were lost. On behalf of uh, Liberia to the World family and all of you well wishers out there, I do want to consolidate this condolence and extend it to the grieving families. A lot of those uh, lives were uh, women and children. Um, now, there are a lot of speculations out there, uh, a lot of opinions, and uh, I kind of want to, I'm following this story and want to really deal with the facts as they come out. However, though, that doesn't uh, relieve me of some of the things that I believe needs to be changed. You guys have all heard it from this channel, heard it from people around you. Liberia needs change. I made a video not too long ago. And I said, we have a lot of work to do. Um, the thing about a channel that promotes positivity is when you start to talk about things that needs to be improved, some people take it as you talking down to the country. Now, there can never be improvement without you knowing what it is that is at fault. It's just impossible. That's, the, that's not how life works. You need to know what you need to be improved on. When you go to your jobs, when you work at your uh, employment agency and stuff like that, um, every whatever term or um, every year and have an annual review kind of tells you what you're doing great and what needs to be improved. Sometimes without that review, you really won't know what you're doing wrong. So it is our duty to really talk about what Liberia needs to what Liberia needs as improvement. So this event was a tragic event. There were a lot of things that went wrong. I think this extends more than blaming the prophet blaming the Zogo, blaming the government. I think it's a collection of all of these things combined. I honestly think there should have been proper planning in that case, right? As far as things that will be put in place. Now, these are some of the facts. Uh, according to what I've seen, eyewitnesses, videos, and stuff like that, the prophet and his team went to the crusade in full convoy, right? They have multiple cars, multiple security guards, people running outside the car, people in the car, protecting him and his team. It will also pose the question of, if the prophet went to that event with security and like a whole detail, what was his thinking, right? Why did he do that? Did he think that the place wasn't safe? Did he think that maybe he may be, you know, people may rush on him for blessing or healing and, you know, and, and he needs somebody to control the crowd? If he thought about those, that means there were some level of threat. In that case, if you are going to protect yourself in that way, I would think that maybe you should think outside of that boundary and say, okay, if I'm concerned about these risk factors, maybe the people who are coming to see me and worship with me, I should at least put some kind of measures in to make sure they are safe. Another group of people who should have been clearly aware were authorities. So this is a collective things, right? This is something that has to do with an entire system in the country that needs to be fixed. Right now, I honestly think, in my opinion, there should just be some investigation done all around as far as pursuing those, uh, the, you know, pursuing the, the, the criminals who incited such a horrendous act that led to people's death. Um, I think there should be, from a higher level, investigation done in through into the authorities in that area, were they aware? Was it lack of performing their job? Did they not know or did they know and just didn't care? That's another question. Third question is, 
the government as a whole, the country, what kind of security measures are they putting in place to really guard their citizens? How are we collectively making sure the country is secure for our citizens and non-citizens, people who are in the country for whatever reasons? Those are questions that I have. So like I am mentioned, this video is going to be more about posing questions because a lot of things has to be answered. And really, for all of us Liberians to think about these questions and say, hey, how can we find answers to this? But also, how can we contribute? There should be requirements if you're going to hold, if you're going to do this and this and this outside of um, past five, past 50 people or this, or if you're going to do an event or a crusade outside, or if you're going to carry out this or that. It's required that you have your own or hired a security firm. If a church is going to have an event in the future, it's required by law that if you're going to have more than 100 people, that you have such and such amount of security firm. You know, the same thing, like I fly all the time. Most of you guys do as well. All of these individual companies has policies. They have resources, right? What they can do. But at the same time, there's a governing body for all airlines, like the FAA. So FAA have their rules, which is in line with the government. They have their rules saying, look, if you're going to fly passengers, you need to have such and such and self safety measures. If you're going to go, if you're going to take more than 100 passengers on your plane or on your boat as commercial, you need to have this and this and this and this. So I believe that's the same thing, right? So overall, this event that happened is a really tragic one. And it speaks to a bigger picture. It has moved past just that event. For me, it's always more just more than just that event to the whole state of the country. Because I'll be honest with you, right? And I tend to stay away from saying this because most Christians out there will start to tell, you know, maybe uh, find my statement offensive. But it's a fact. I've been in that country so many times and, and you guys have and some, some of you live there, right? A lot of those people who go to crusade and pastors and churches. Now, I'm not just talking about just the event that happened because I don't want to say that before because people will say, oh, so you're saying that those people who went to worship the law, um, or they just go there because of this and this and that's why they died. No, I'm not saying that, right? I'm just saying in general, especially in Liberia, in Africa, poor continent. Most people seek any kind of religion or anything. It could be religion, Christians or deity, or people go to the interior to go to medicine, medicine woman. Most of these things are done because people are less fortunate. People feel like this is their only hope. So that crusade for me has, it's way past just a prophet prophesizing to people and offering them better lives, right? It's more than just that. It's more than people just looking to worship on a, on, a, on a nice evening. It has more to do with that for me. I think it's, it has to do with the state of the country, the mindset of the people, the hope of the people, all of that. Because like I mentioned, a lot of these people who were going to the crusade are not people who even practice Christianity, are not people who pray at home by themselves with the family or at church. There are people who just hear, hey, there's a prophet coming. He's performed miracle. He has holy oil that you can buy and you can bless your life and you'll be prosperous. And like I mentioned, it's not just a crusade. I want to be very careful when I say these things because people are very sensitive at this time, which I understand. And a lot of Christians, when you mention things like this, they start to, um, they start to, really come to a different conclusion. I'm just speaking in general. If we ask that investigation be done on the prophet, a lot of Christians get upset. And my thing is, it's not, you know, we Liberia, we think if somebody, if they're doing investigation on something, that means the person is guilty. You know, I'll give you an example. In the United States, you can have your, just example, your child that you really love your child. Everybody knows you love your child. You will never hurt your child. Now, you can't even spank your child. You can't. You love your child to death. 
But if your child is in your house and something happened, that child dies, the authority will always question you. They'll tell you, look, it's just part of procedure. Let's clear you. They'll say, let's clear you. Let's just ask a few questions to clear you out so we can start looking for the corporate. We start looking for whoever is responsible or whatever is responsible. So I think it should be the same. I think investigation should be done on the prophet and his detail that carry out the event that happened that day. The local authorities should be investigated because there's, there's no way they did not know about that event to see, hey, how can we make sure this event takes place smoothly? And let's also put a team to really find, investigate, and find those people who incited the actual act to see if they had a backing, if they were sent there by somebody, or if it's just their act. So, so we clear, we go through all of these three like groups and try to find solutions. And that's also beneficial to the family because the family will have closure. Let me tell you this. Because again, one thing again is Liberian people are saying, hey, you guys should stop doing investigation, stop blaming and this and stop asking questions, just grieve with the family. I can tell you this, let me be blunt. Grieving with the family is good. But I can tell you the most priority for those families are answers. It's not condolences. It's not gold funding. That'll help. It's not us putting on Facebook, writing our statuses, wishing the family well. That's good. But the family ultimate, and you think about it yourself. If something happened to you, your close family member, your mother, sister, child, whatever, what will be the top priority for you, right? It'll be, who did this? I need answers right now, this second. You wouldn't say, oh, hey, I want to wait a week. Let me get all the condolences from people. Let me uh, get all the, the gold for me before I'm start asking before. Authority starts asking questions. No. Like, I would want answer five seconds after something happened to my loved one. I wouldn't want to wait. So... Those people out there who are asking questions, who are probing, digging, shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be ridiculed or not ridiculed per se, but like hassled by other people who are saying, don't be asking the question now. Let's just grieve with the family. I don't think that's the priority of the family right now. I think that family need answers today. So. That's what I'm saying. All of these three groups needs to be questions, questioned. And it should be of high priority that investigation is done and answers are given to the public and the, the family, first of all, and the public so that we are aware of what happened that day. Those three groups should be questioned. The pastor shouldn't be excluded because he's a man of God. The authorities in the community shouldn't be excluded because, oh, maybe they were not aware and those Zogo guys shouldn't be excluded because they're saying, oh, the pastor should have organized this and this, or the community should have, the, the authorities, local authorities should have organized this and this and this. Everybody should be investigated and questioned to get an answer. I pray for the family, and, uh, and I hope that they come out of this uh, more united, more together, and also just the country as a whole. Um, that, like I said, you know, you can pray, but you got to act, right? Not only do I pray for the goodness of Liberia, but I also encourage all of us to act because you can pray all day, all night, but if you don't act, things won't get done because it's just not how it is. God won't come down himself to do it. So we all Liberia, we are really, we're people of, of faith. We're, uh, Liberia is a Christian country. So we love our prayers, we love to pray. But we can pray from now to December. But if all of us at the same time don't act, God has to use us to give us what we want. So if we don't do anything, it's not going to happen. So that's my message to all of us Liberians out there. And that's my take on uh, what happened. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.